Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike with Fowler Family Farm. We are in the shop today because I am building some kitchen cabinets and I'm gonna bring you guys along and just kind of show you my process and, and how I do that. It's not necessarily gonna be a how-to video, but if you follow along enough and you, are, you got some woodworking skills, you could definitely do this yourself. I'm gonna be doing the two cabinets on each side of the stove, the oven stove range combination there. Um, I'm building on both sides is, is identical. So whatever I build on the right side of it, I'm gonna build for the left side of it. So that makes it pretty simple. You can knock two out with not much hassle. Um, so what I'm doing is I've measured 35 and a quarter inches. That's my height of my cabinets without the countertop. I plan on putting a three quarter inch countertop granite or stone type countertop on the cabinets. So that will give me a total of 36 inches. I could still do the one and a quarter or the one and a half and that, and that just is gonna add a quarter or a half an inch to the height of the cabinets themselves. 36 and a half is not horrible, I, but I do prefer sticking at that 36 inch height for me. I'm not a real tall guy, I'm only 5'10", so if I was 6'2", 6 6'4", 6 something like that, I'd probably stick with 37, 38 inches even. I've already uh, measured my 35 and a quarter inches here on my plywood. This is paint grade maple three quarter inch plywood. And this is what I make all the carcass of the cabinets with. And then I'm face framing each cabinet as well. And I'm using maple, paint grade maple, just one and a half inch sticks on those as well. They're, they're, three, uh, they're also three quarter inch thick as well. Okay, y'all probably already saw my first mistake. That was my safety glasses and my mask. I forgot to wear them both. Um, the safety glasses, I, I remember, I left them in the house. I went back in the house while I was wearing them and took them off real quick and just forgot to grab them. My mask is sitting right there, so I have no excuse. I should have been wearing both of those. Um, you guys did see me using a Makita plunge saw um, or track saw, what they call it. I love this tool, I've been using it. Um, I got this just to make my kitchen cabinets with, and it is incredible. I mean, it makes, obviously, you cut right up against this track, and it's, it's I mean, once you get it set, it's not moving. I mean, it's, you can't move it. So it's gonna make a very straight cut. I just measured 35 and a quarter, you know, at both ends, lined it up, made a straight cut. Um, this is gonna keep me from having to put a huge piece of, plywood over on the table saw, which is wonky and I can do a miscut. Pretty simple with that. So this will, this will save me a lot of time and make my cuts a lot more precise. Well worth the money, but it is expensive. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the two pieces that I have that are cut 35 and a quarter, and I'm gonna cut the depth on, on them as well now. Um, your depth is probably going to be different than mine, so just make sure you use your depth cut on that or your depth depth measurement on that. Uh, but I will get two sides out of this piece and then two sides out of the other piece, and then I'll have to do it one more time because I got to get a total of six sides. Okay, so now I have. My, all my sides cut. I have I actually have eight sides. I only need six right now, so the other two will go towards another section of the cabinets. So now it's time to cut out the toe kick in each corner of the side. So I'm going to do six of those right now because I need six sides. So I use a straight edge to make sure my jigsaw stays straight. And then my toe kicks are three and a quarter by three and three quarters. It's three and three quarters high, three and a quarter deep. Okay, so I've got all six 
sides already cut for the toe piece and I'll bring you guys in for a close up real quick. So that's what it's gonna look like. And the reason I only do, actually I said, I think earlier I said three and a half, I only do three here because I still have a three quarter inch face frame that's gonna come out here and then three quarter inch worth of door fronts and drawer fronts. So all together, that's gonna leave me a little over four inches here of tow room. Uh, there will be a half inch piece of, uh, to cover up the, all the toe kicks. Okay, so I'm gonna go eat lunch real quick. I wanna give you guys about 30 to 45 seconds of our baby goats. So we'll be right back. For the main portion of the cabinet, where the three drawers are going to be, I've already cut, cut the bottom piece uh, to, the, to the right size. That's right here. Now I need stretchers to go along the back, the bottom, and the top. I think I'm going to need a total of four. So I've measured these two pieces. These are scrap pieces. They don't have to be exact uh, widths. Um, I'm using these. These are three and three eighths inch wide uh, and I'll cut, I'll cut four of these pieces and I'll show you where they go. Okay so now I have four stretchers. Um, they don't have to be the exact same width even though these are. These are all the same width. Uh, they don't have to be. It's really just for support and stability for the cabinet carcass. It'll go across like that in the back at the bottom up here at the top. Go on, Jim. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I think y'all just heard Braxton. He opened the door and said, hey, are we going to the gym? So yeah, we're gonna go to the gym real quick. We'll come back and I'll show you uh, how this is all put together. Okay, so I've got all the stretcher pieces cut out and I have pocket holes in two pocket holes on both ends and make sure both ends are on the same side. And I've got four of those and then I have the, the bottom, you guys can't see that, but the bottom shelf that's gonna connect the two sides, the two sides of the cabinet carcass. Uh, I've got pocket holes on it as well and it's gonna be on the underside of it where you don't see the pocket holes. And this will be on the top so you don't see the pocket holes, uh, but you'll see it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, uh, this is one of the sides. I'm gonna start with this one and I'm just gonna attach the bottom shelf to this side. Uh, and then we'll be able to attach the, the second side over here in a little bit as well. So this will be the side. This is the bottom shelf. I just have it propped up for now. Uh, this straight piece of wood keeps my bottom shelf level and straight and I got it clamped on there. So now I just need to glue it and screw it in. Okay, so here's the cabinet carcass. 
I still have to put the face frame on, which I've cut all those pieces already. Um, I'm using one and a half inch down to three quarter inch uh, face frames, and the thickness is three quarters of an inch all the way around. So now we're gonna start building the face frame. Okay, so now I'm going to glue, and again, pocket hole, screw my styles and rails together to make up the face frame. Okay, so here's the cabinet carcass. I got it laying on its back right now. And here is the face frame. It's all built up. It's got the right spacing that I want. Now I just gotta put some glue down. And uh, what I like to do, uh, I glue, I put glue down and then I also tack it in place with a, a little Brad Neller, 18 gauge Brad Neller. And then I go back in and fill all those brad nail holes up with some putty. All right, so this is the cabinet carcass. I still have the spice rack to attach over here on this side, but I wanted to get this part done before I built the sp uh, spice rack side. Um, I've already got most of the pieces cut for it, but I, did, I wanted to know exactly where this ended up. Uh, and I had my math right. I had my measurements right. I just wanted to be sure. And yes, that is a sticker. But this all gets sanded. So, uh, like there's this right here is a little bit uneven right here. But it'll all be sanded and smooth and you won't even know it's multiple pieces of wood. Okay, y'all. So this is the cabinet carcass it's finished uh, this is just part one of this video uh, there will be a part two where I actually install the drawer slides build the drawers um, the only thing you won't see me finish on this until probably a month or two down the road is the actual drawer fronts and then this door facing right here and that's just because I'm gonna buy all my wood for that at the same time uh, that way it all is very similar comes from the same lot. Uh, I just don't want anything to look odd. <clears throat> so if I buy half of it now and half of it later, I, it may look totally different. I just don't want that. So I'll bring you guys in for a close look. I didn't show me building this one, this side over here, just simply because of the exact same process as this. It's just way smaller. And this is the portion right here that is gonna be the spice rack. It's gonna be a pull-out spice rack uh, with just a door covering it. So the door will be attached to the actual drawer, the pull-out drawer itself. And you'll just pull the door out with the spice rack. Um, and I'm going to build that spice rack. Hopefully I get that built along with these three drawers. Um, and that'll be part two of my video. Okay, I want to bring you guys in for a closer look at this real quick. So you can see, like, here's some nail, some, some of the holes that I used uh, wood filler on and then sanded. And it's real smooth. I mean, it feels really good. When it's painted, you won't even be able to tell it's there. And this is flush right here. My slide, drawer slide will go right here. There's the toe kit. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, just a part of my barn dominium build. Uh, I've built all the cabinets that are in there right now. Um, I've got a lot more to do and I just need to get started and need to get to working with it and just don't, I just don't need to stop. I just need to keep going until I finish it all. Uh, but I gotta get out there and do, you know, 
videos of all the animals and stuff like that as well. So it takes time away, but I really got to start working on this, getting it done. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Remember to hit the like button, leave us a comment, and we'll see you on the next video. Remember, do the good.